Right, it's okay, welcome back to the Average Golfers channel and thank you for joining me for what seems to be proving to be a popular part of the channel and it's me testing the tips from fellow golf YouTubers and uh, if I'm being perfectly honest with you, it's helped my own game massively in recent weeks. One of the things that's a major problem for a lot of golfers is driver. Getting that club off of the tee into that fairway can cause us all kind of problems and this week I'm looking at a five second driver tip that can possibly help us all get that ball up and out there. Right, so a quick reminder for those of you new to the channel, the idea is as an average golfer, I test out the tips from fellow golf YouTubers, put them through the paces and give you my opinion on whether or not they work for me and whether or not they might just work for you. And this week, the tip comes from Steve Johnson. He's based at Peebles Golf Club in Scotland. And apart from being a decent lad, he's got some great tips going on. So make sure you go and subscribe to Steve's uh, channel. And if you want a better description, because don't forget, it's worth pointing out, this is my interpretation of Steve's uh, video. But I might get a few things wrong. So like I said, go out and check the full video link down below in the description. But this, like I said, it's a five second driver tip and we need to go back inside to the bay. I'll start hitting some balls and go through this process that Steve says could help us sort out a few driver problems. Right, so the first thing is, what is the tip designed to do? Well, it's designed to make sure that we are hitting our driver very much on the upswing. It goes back to some things we've looked at already, which is about that low point in, uh, in your swing. And that's kind of, so in that complete full arc, at some point in that arc, there will be a low point. First of all, establishing where that low point is. And it changes from irons, fairway woods into driver. And with driver, it's very much about making sure that the low point in your swing is behind the ball and therefore we're hitting it on an upward blow. I think most of us will recognise that with driver, we're supposed to be hitting it on the upswing. What Steve highlights is the problem with that is quite often we'll set the ball up off our front foot, which is the kind of position inside left heel in my case. We'll sway back, which is another dangerous thing that we do. And on the way back forward, we're still on that backward foot. This is us attempting to hit on the upswing, which means we're losing a lot of power. Like I said, we're very much back on that right foot. And although we've hit it on the upswing, it's not achieving what we're trying to do in terms of um, optimizing power, all those other kind of things. So the point is, how do we ensure that we get in a position at address that makes sure or guarantees, give us better chance, whatever you want to look at it, of making sure that our low point is behind the ball. And he comes up with this drill, which is this five second drill. And that is basically, we're going to make a slight difference to it, but you would essentially address the ball. That's our standard position. Yeah. Like I said, inside the left heel. But what happens is if we keep our weight, if, if my center of address, center of gravity, my head, my chest is over that front ball, then we're slightly on the forward tilt, we're leaning forward, we're over the ball address. That's not where we want to be. So this five second drill is to make sure that we shift ourselves back to a position which is behind the ball and therefore moves our lowest point without changing anything else. We're going to concentrate on moving anything else other than our center of gravity, if you like. And the way he does that, he puts a tee peg in the ground, one club head behind. So essentially puts a club, uh, a tee peg rather, in the ground, one full club head behind the ball, behind the, uh, behind the, uh, the, the, the address position. Now we can't put a tee in the ground, so what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna move that back slightly. We've got some alignment sticks, which is gonna be exactly the same principle and I'm going to put them, as you can see, in exactly the same position. And that's our visual. Then what you do, that's a little bit wonky. Then what you do is you take your normal address. Yeah. Address the ball inside left heel. But we're going to shift our center of gravity. So that's the center of my head. The center of my sternum, my chest is going to be more in line with this uh, imaginary line, this T peg that we've placed just behind. So what it does, it shifts us slightly onto the back foot. It changes us with a bit more of an upward tilt. So all of a sudden, my, like I said, center, center line and core is over this point at the rear of the ball where the T position was, as opposed to over where my club head is at address. So 
automatically what he wants us to do then is take a swing and then we stop back and I have a trouble with this I'm going to move the ball out the way for this we take back and we hit into there now I'm not sure how he does it because he manages to stop the club but I haven't got the strength or whatever my momentum takes me forward but all we're doing is we're coming back into this position and you're just holding and controlling and the focus being on the position behind the ball now what I'm going to do of course we've got Trackman connected and what I want to see is if by doing this will it shift my low point and will it give me a positive angle attack so in other words am I hitting up on the ball so let's give that a go so right address as normal I've still got my sort of flared right heel from a previous video that we've done I'm loving that and there's some other tips that we've done that have seriously made the real positives on my own personal game but anyway just gives me a little bit more room in this backswing so whether you use a t-peg or whether you use an alignment aid or whether you use two pence piece it is literally one club behind the ball then at address all we're going to do is I'm going to make sure that my center line is over the alignment stick or like I said whatever it is you're using well, first of all it was a decent strike We'll have a look at data let's just stop for one second while i go and check this out and see where we finished in terms of was it an upward blow and where was my low point right so as you can see angle of attack 5.8 degrees on the up um, and the low point that's eight inches behind the ball at impact so where this is a difficult one for me on a personal level is that I think that I hit very much on the up. Well, in fact, I know I do. So it's not a major problem that I've got personally. So trying to sort of prove the theory is a difficult one. All we have done is that in that instance, our low point is certainly behind the ball and our attack angle is very much on the up. So we're going to try it one more time. We'll do exactly the same. See if we can give, we got a 220 I'd carry with that one. Let's see what we can do this time. We'll have another little go at this. Right, so there's a, there's a bit of thought needed. So like I said, I'm addressing the ball as normal, but I'm just shifting my weight slightly back down onto this um, center point. So there is a focus needed. And don't forget, when you come in to do this in reality, there isn't going to be no alignment stick, there's going to be no two pence piece, there's going to be no T-peg. You're going to have to pick a mark on the ground and visualize that and set your alignment to just back, or not your alignment, your center point to just behind that one club length, one club head behind the ball. And to be honest with you, like I said, that is something I will notice. I've shifted my weight slightly into the position as to where I would normally get this at address. Right. Let me be quiet for a minute and I'll concentrate and give this a go. Now one thing it does, again, it stops me from swaying, which is obviously a major, major problem a lot of golfers have. So we're not shifting ourselves down onto that right hand side uh, and not getting back. So that was really noticeable more so there, much more penetrating ball flight and a decent ball to be fair. So. We can just have a look at those numbers again. So again, 3.8 angle of attack, six inches behind the ball, 236 carry. I mean, they're decent numbers, but all it's really shown me is that again, like I said, is that low point definitely stays behind the ball. And it's very much like I said, what we've seen in other videos that we've done so far. It's a five second tip, as Steve Johnson calls it. Don't forget that sort of, center point behind the ball and i'll try and do this again but what steve was suggesting was turn and then you stop in at this position turn and stop in at this position and all you're doing is concentrating on this as being the position that we're looking to stop into and then obviously that's going to follow through and that's going to take or make your um angle attack angle very much on the up so you're not focusing here you're not focusing on lifting yourself you're not focusing on anything other than your address position, your centre of gravity being back here, and you're turning, you're stopping in there. Then when it comes to addressing the ball, it's just exactly that same mentality, focusing on that point behind. So, did the tip work or not? No idea, because like I said, for me, per on a personal level, I don't think it's something um, I struggle with. 
However, on each of the shots that we played, it certainly made sure that our uh, low point was behind the ball. Our attack angle was always on the positive. So what I would say, very much try this yourself. It's something that you struggle with on the driver. It's a very simple uh, mental approach to getting your position, not thinking about anything else. Your address position is key. That center point of head and sternum is key. And leave the rest to sort of physics, if you like. Let that club head fly its way through. And it should make sure that you're hitting with a positive attack angle. And in theory, the drive should be that little bit better. Anyway, as ever, thank you for watching. If you've tried this kind of thing yourself, or even better, if you watch the video, go and try the tip. Please come back and give us some feedback as to whether or not this kind of concept worked for you, because I think that's what helps fellow golfers when they read a load of comments. If they see a load of positivity around it, then it might persuade them to give it a go themselves. Right, thank you for watching. See you soon.